Have you been wanting to upgrade your 3D printer with a touchscreen? Do you have an old Android smartphone laying around collecting dust? Well, you can turn that old Android smartphone into a touchscreen for your 3D printer. I'll show you how to do it on today's Crimson Technology. Whether you've got a Raspberry Pi and you're looking for an easy way to control it, or you watched last week's guide on how to run Clipper on a thin client, you can use an Android smartphone as a touchscreen. The first thing you're going to need is an Android smartphone. I'll be using these Motorola Moto E phones running Android 4.4.2. This process will be slightly different for phones running version 5.0 and higher, but I'll show you both methods. You also need a USB cable for your phone. This will be how you connect your phone to your 3D printer. You'll need some way to mount the phone to your 3D printer. I designed this mount for the Ender 3 that takes the place of the original click wheel LCD. You just remove the two screws holding on the LCD and reuse the same screws to attach the new phone mount. And you'll need a 3D printer with clipper running on it. We made one last week with a thin client, so go check that out if you'd like to try it yourself. If your version of Android is over 5.0, the first thing you're going to do is open up the Play Store, then you're going to search for X server, and it's going to be X server XSDL. This should be the first link, and we're going to hit install. If your version of Android is under 5.0, like this Moto E that I'm using here, the version of X server on the Play Store won't work properly. So instead, we're going to get an older version of the app from APK Pure. So open up your web browser. And we're going to search for APK Pure X Server 1.20.41. And it should be the first link. Now scroll down and hit the green download APK button. And you can hit OK. And once that's downloaded, we can hit open. And if this pops up, you're just going to hit settings and scroll down to unknown sources. And you're just going to tap the checkbox next to that. And then you can close that out and we can go back to our downloads and you can just tap on X server and hit install. Now we're just going to click done rather than open because we have one more thing to do. Now regardless of your Android version, we're going to go to the Play Store and we're going to search for auto start. Tap on the first result from Giro Labs and hit install. Once that's installed, we can open it right away. Now on this screen, you're going to turn Auto Startup to On, tap the Add button next to Applications, and you're going to choose your X server application, then uncheck Show Notification, and go to Home Screen after Start, and now we can exit out of this app. Now tap on your X server application. When you see the black screen with the countdown at the bottom, tap anywhere on the screen. Tap Native, tap X 2.5, and tap OK. Now close out the app from your recent apps list and restart it. Now get ready as soon as you open the app. At the top, tap Change Device Configuration. Tap Mouse Emulation, Mouse Emulation Mode, and tap Desktop No Emulation. Now hit OK, scroll down and hit OK again. And if you're on Android 5.0 or higher, you'll be at a blue screen right now, which is what you want. But because this is Android 4, we need to do one more thing. So close out of your application once more, reopen it, and when you see the black screen with the countdown, tap. We're going to do native again, we're going to do X 2.5, and then instead of hitting OK here, what we're going to do is we're going to change display number to 3. So just tap the number 3 times until it says display number 3. Now you can hit OK. Now if it says it again, reboot your device. This is also a good time to test whether our auto start application is working correctly. Once it's booted back up, depending on the speed of the phone, it might take a few seconds after boot for the app to launch. Now if you did it right, you should see a blue screen like this. Now you're done with the phone for now, we need to switch over to our Clipper device, whether it's a Raspberry Pi or a thin client or whatever you've got running Clipper. You can plug your Raspberry Pi or thin client into a monitor and attach a mouse and keyboard, or you can just SSH into them through something like PuTTY. 
Now we're going to log into our device. If you followed last week's guide on how to install Clipper, you've already got Clipper Screen installed. If you skip that part of the guide, you'll have to install Clipper Screen now. So go ahead and type dot slash kiauh slash kiauh dot sh and hit enter. Now you're going to do install number one and number five for Clipper Screen. Once that's done, we can hit B for back, Q for quit, and now we need to type sudo apt update. And now we can type sudo apt install android-tools-adb. If you had to change your display number in the X server app to display number three, you'll have to change one more thing. So go ahead and type CD Clipper Screen with a capital K and capital S scripts and hit enter. Now we're going to type nano android adb.sh and hit enter. Now because we had to change our display to number three, what that means is that it's changing the port number to 6003 instead of 6000. So we need to come over here at the top of the file and change this to 6003. Now, if you didn't have to change your display number to 3, you don't have to do this step. Then we're going to hit Control x y and Enter. Now we can type cp android-adb.sh space launch underscore clipper screen capital K capital S dot sh and hit Enter. Now we're going to type chmod plus x launch clipper screen dot sh. Then we're going to reboot our device with sudo reboot. Once it's booted back up you can plug your phone into one of the USB ports on the device. Now you're going to go into your phone settings and if you've never enabled developer options before you're going to scroll down to about phone, scroll down to build number and you're going to tap it about 10 times and then it'll say you're a developer. I'm already a developer so it's fine. Then we go back and now we have a new menu here called developer options. You can turn it on at the top, hit OK, and we're going to scroll down and next to USB debugging we're going to hit that checkbox. We're going to hit OK, and if everything went well this should pop up. Go ahead and hit always allow from this computer and OK. Now you can take your phone and plug it into the USB port on your device and then slide it into the 3D printed mount. Now turn on your 3D printer, and when everything is booted up, you should be greeted with a screen like this. Congratulations! You just turned your old Android smartphone into a touchscreen. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.